Today I want to talk about destructuring, object destructuring with ES6 and a couple of other features in ES6, but specifically destructuring and why developers are so happy about this. So we've got an object here with a whole bunch of properties inside of it. And let's say I'm going to pass that person object into a function. And this is how a function would have been written back in ES5. So before 2015, before all the ES6 features came out. If we took this and let's say just as an example, I wanted to take three of these properties. We'll just take the first three properties and I want to save those as a JSON string in local storage. Okay, so we're taking this object and we're passing it into this function. So the object's being passed in. Now, what I need to do is I need to extract. I don't want to keep the whole object because I don't want all of these properties inside of local storage. I just want the first three. So I'm going to have to extract three of those properties. I'm going to create a variable for the ID, for the name, for the date of birth. And there's three different approaches I could take to getting these properties. Now, we have to do a little bit of error handling because maybe the object being passed in, I'm not guaranteed that all three of those properties are going to exist. So I can set it with a default value. So if it doesn't exist, this is what the value is going to be. So it's going to be a timestamp. And if it does exist, so I'm checking with the if statement, then I'm going to take the property from that object and put it into my variable. Same thing with name. I can do it the opposite way where I'm assuming that it exists, put it in there. And then if it didn't, if this is null, if it's undefined, then I'm putting a default value and overwriting what that was, but only if it didn't exist. And then the third way is using a ternary operator to achieve the same end. If it doesn't exist, then, or actually, sorry, that should be if it does exist, we're going to use the date of birth. Otherwise, we'll use this new date of object, converting it into a timestamp and saving that. Then we stringify it and we create our brand new object, our three properties, ID, name, and date of birth. And we pass in our three variables, ID, name, date of birth, stringify them, pass them into local storage. Okay, so that was the old ES5 way of doing this. Now, in ES6, we can really simplify the way that we do all of the stuff inside of there. So my save person function, the ES6 version of it, um, I can accept an object, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to destructure the object as I pass it in. So I'm going to say I'm looking for the ID, the name, and the date of birth properties. And that's all I'm going to bring in from that object. Now, those default values that I don't have, okay, well, if ID doesn't exist, I'm going to give it a default value of date.now. There it is. If name doesn't exist, I'm giving it a default value of blank. If date of birth doesn't exist, we're going to give it the value new date and we'll pass in a string 2001.01.01 and we will convert that with value of so that we are getting a timestamp. Okay, I have just now with this one line inside of here replicated everything that I did from line 16 to 24. All of that's done. Now, there's not going to be any difference with the next line for the key. That's going to be the same. With this, the stringify, if I bring that in, now with ES6 shorthand properties, I don't have to duplicate these things. If the va variable that I want to use and the property have the same name, I can just do that. So this isn't destructuring, but it's another great feature in ES6. And then our final line will be the same again, local storage, set item, key, and our JSON string. And there it is. So taking all of this code, we're condensing it into one quick little thing. And when I save it, it's going to break it apart. Multiple lines make it a little bit easier to read. But here's my default values. If the properties don't exist, I'm extracting only those things from the object. That's what the destructuring is doing. And it saved me having to think about this, having to write either an if statement or a ternary operator. It just does that inherently. And then you add in the shorthand properties. It's a nice, simple, quick, easy function to read. And that is why developers love destructuring. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.